Some strongholds only come out through fasting and praying. You want your family, your loved ones to live with fast. It hurts. It's a sacrifice. Three days ain't no joke. It's hard. My stomach be probably. And then it seems like I smell everything. Ain't no stores around, but I smell bread cooking. Ain't no bakery nowhere, but I smell pizza. When I'm fasting, I can smell a mile away. And then all of a sudden, when once in a while I watch TV, I see pizza, pizza, little Caesar. Five one get one free. It ain't five one get one free when I'm not fasting. But the minute I fast, five one get one free. I'm like, oh dear, now extra cheese and that thing, garlic bread. But because I want to get close to God, I don't go. I don't eat. I fast. And you can't stop. That's the key. You can't stop. Just because you fast three days last month don't mean you cannot fast this month. You got to fast even more to keep what you got. And they ain't teaching that anyway. You got to do more than you did last year to keep what you got from last year to next year. It's good to get it, but it takes more to keep it. So if you did a consecration last year, you need to do a double one this year. Because you're going to lose your blessings from last year if you don't keep it up. If you don't keep watering the plant, it's going to die. If you don't keep concentrating your body, it's going to go back to the way it was. You can't say, well, I fast last month. I don't have to do it this month. Be consistent. Every year this time, Lord, I'm going to do this. Every month this day, I'm going to do this. And don't change because people come in your life. Don't change because people talk about you. Don't change because you're upset. Love your... It's getting into that I'm going ahead. But love your enemies is one of the ways to get close to God. If you can love someone that did you bad, you know how you know you're close to God? Because that happened to Jesus. He loved Judas. He loved them people that stoned him. And that what proves him to God. God said, in spite of all they done, my son still love still. He didn't turn his back and say, I can't stand y'all people. Y'all ain't getting into my kingdom. Y'all crucified me. But we'll be like that. I'm close to God, but I can't stand that brother. I got a good relationship to God, but I can't stand him too. Come on, somebody. You don't have to be in their presence, but just let it go. And say, by faith, I love them. By faith, I believe but don't put nothing in front of God. Stop it. He's telling me to tell the church, stop putting people, things in front of God. If I could lose two jobs because of God, then you could lose because of God. And that's why he provides for us. Because of the sacrifices I made before. And the sacrifices I'm making now. And he says, son, because of your sacrifices, you don't have to worry. No more. You don't have to deal with it no more. Why? Because you did what you're supposed to do. He tests you. Yeah, he tests you. He makes sure your check don't come just to see if you still going to pay. Tithes and off. I was trying to share with this son of mine. If God... If you got something and you don't have it no more, then go collect cans and bottles and still pay your tithes. Pay your tithes. Give an offering. I might not be employed no more, but I'm still going to find a way to give an offering. You don't stop because circumstances stop. That's a test to see where you stop. Hello? You get close to God by obeying his principles. 
You can't obey him one day and then think you're close to God and disobey him the next day. You disconnected. You got to obey his principles when it hurts. Close sacrifice hurts. Sacrifice hurts. Sacrifice doesn't be cool. You can't say I'm cool and I'm, I'm, I'm sacrificing but everything is happening. The closer to God, we must ask ourselves, what are we willing to sacrifice for closeness to God? Will he get the same sacrifice all the time? Or will you stop when things get hard? Many people do not be consistent with God, but say they got a relationship with God. You don't have a relationship if you're not consistent with God. I have a relationship with my wife because I kiss her every night. That's a relationship. It always happens. Are you praying every night? Are you talking to God every night? Or do you say, I'm too tired tonight? I can't get up and pray at 3 in the morning. I can't get up and pray at 4 in the morning like I used to do anymore. Why? Because there's too many people in my house. There's too much stuff going on. Nothing should stop you from what you used to do for God. I'm getting into more, but the, the closer you get to God, the more he expects from you. Just like with my supervisor when I, when I had this. The, the higher I got up in, in office, the more workload I got. So the more close you get to God, the more he requires from you. So if you was given 50 cents and you got close to God, he want a dollar. And you get close, he want two. The closer you get, the more you have to give. Of your time, of your resources, of yourself. Sacrifice yourself for God to get close to God. So we ask ourselves, how do we get close to God? Sacrifice in the natural and in the spiritual. Let your spirit work for God regardless of how you feel. Oh my God, he just said, you know, you control your spirit. I used to preach that and they almost threw me out the church over there. Because they were like, how you doing that? And I showed them where the prophet spirit is subject to God. The leader spirit is subject to the spirit. Your spirit is subject to you. So if you're not feeling it, if you're not letting it do what it got to do, it won't do. So you got to help your spirit get close to God. How? By praying in the spirit. If you're not praying in the spirit, then your spirit is not. That's for somebody. Because you will let. <laughs> when things get hard, many people do not be consistent with God. So listen, this is something. So you cannot get close to him. Because he know you will let him down. Check that out. Check it out. You gonna let somebody get close to you that's always messing you around? Always messing you up? Always not doing what they say they're gonna do? No, you're gonna stay away from them. Why? Because they can't keep their word. They'll mess you up. Man, we'll let them go. They ain't doing you no good. They ain't close to you like they say they are. They always got an excuse. They always got a situation. They always got a problem. Stay over there. That's how God feels towards those that call themselves close to him, but always breaking their vow. Always messing up. Always saying, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll pay that next month or next week. God is looking at your relationship to him. I told you what I used. I used to go up, I had no money in the, in the program, I had no money, I had nothing. I walked to my appointment, I found a quarter, right in the church. Went again, found 50 cents, right in the church. Doubled it. Went again, found the dollar, right in the church. The more I find, the more I gave. You get, 
as our late great chief apostle said, like, this God gift. Like, even now, all the ministers and pastors that know me say, that man is a sower. I don't stop because I'm here. You got to give more now because you're here. If God provided for me when I had nothing, what makes you think he won't keep providing me if I give when I have a little something? Give him your time. Don't be anxious to run home. Don't be anxious to go back where you come from. Just give him your time. Give him an hour or two or three in the ministry in church. Don't be afraid to stand in church for a while. You ain't going to miss nothing. They got so good now. They got DVR. You can record something. You are without excuse. Well, Lord, the basketball game came on. You got a DVR it. You got to set that alarm that came to the game, came and recorded, and came to church and got all you're supposed to get, and then prayed, and then got your little DVR and turned it on. So you can tell God it was, you know, it's, you need to get your DVR now. <laughs> but you're close to God. But you don't want to miss like the, uh, I was telling my first lady, I was so upset, but I was happy. Because on men's day, the walking dead came on <laughs> season six. I'm like, wait a minute, why now? Why on men's day? But I stopped in my men's day, and I missed it. Now I gotta wait till October or whatever to see season six. But it's okay, I gave, no, seven, six, I gave God his time. Amen. I, I was watching most of it off season five or more. No, no. Then season six was coming on at eight. I was like, oh no, I gotta get there. Nine o'clock, I got it. Got there at ten o'clock. I was too tired to watch any of it. <laughs> but that's God for you. When <laughs> we watch that movie, stuff like that. But I'm just saying, you gotta sacrifice for God. And when you sacrifice, the enemy will bring what you like or what you want just to stop you from your sacrifice. And that's what he was trying to do to me with the evil dead, because I like that picture. I might be saved, but I like that picture. Not that. <laughs> hey, to each his own. There ain't nothing but a TV show. He ain't like, like his boo to me. But he do let me know these, these zombies out here ain't no joke. <laughs> I see them as demons. They ain't saved. They have ripped you apart. <laughs> That was a rip you apart. You better be prepared. <laughs> you watch them corners. I learned to be more observant now. <laughs> Woo! You got some holy wisdom in TV sometimes. <laughs> My God. But you know, many people sing that song, Closer Walk with Thee, but then they get here and don't want to get a closer walk. And then they go all their life singing close to walk with D and don't understand how to get it. So you're singing something you don't know how to get. <laughs> I want to close to walk with D, but nobody never teach you how to get close to walk with D. They will teach you the lyrics and how to sing it, but they don't explain to you exactly how to get close to D by sacrificing, by giving up something you don't like, something you like. I told you my sacrifice. I get, that man told me about 15, almost 17 or 20 years ago. You want, the Lord told me to tell you, and you know, this is real and it really happened, and give up something that you love. And God will give you what you desire and what you want. I was smart. I gave up pork. I ain't give up all the other stuff. I'm like, uh -uh. <laughs> I love pork just as much as I love everything else. So, <laughs> so I gave him up. <laughs> All the people went on his sacrifice. And I, that's what y'all want. I gave him up pork. And until now, I don't eat it. And I don't eat it. Why? Because I made that sacrifice. I really love that. I missed my hand hocks. What? Big tails? Oh, my goodness. They tell me I don't miss that stuff. But <laughs> I gave it up. And since I gave it up, you got your wife, you got your child, you got your home, you got your account, you got your church, you got your ministry, all that. Thank you, Lord. And all that and your family together. All, right now. all your family said, yes. so what I said I wanted, he gave me because I gave him. 
you got to sacrifice the things you love to get close to God. What did he do? He loved his son. That was his only son by Sarah at the time. But he was willing and ready for you, Lord. I want you. I want to stay close to you. I love our relationship. Nowadays, they won't even let, let go a job. More or less their child. I'm closing, but I gotta, I gotta move it along. Listen to this. Listen to this. Because can God depend on you? Can He say to His enemy, "Consider my servant, Bishop so and so," even when they do not have, they sacrifice. And give to him because they know he will not he will return it. So many people sing the song, like I said, for a close one with he, and 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 they don't understand what they're saying because you want it, and then when they come, you don't want to give up what's required for it. So if you're not gonna give up what is required for a closer walk with thee, stop singing the song. Because if you sing it, he's expecting you to give up what you got to give up to get the closer walk with me. I think clouds. Jesus. I see I see the power over here. Only because it's over. I hope I'm not using the six, but they see it. And that's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said about Moses. He did not care about his comfort. He had a family, he had a house, he had a, a hut, whatever you call that, gold, everything. He didn't care about that. He went in no he I'd rather have the wilderness and God than all that other stuff. And that's what we gotta be like for ourselves. We gotta be like him. We gotta be like that. We gotta give up everything. For God. I mean, you got to leave everything. You know? Nothing comes before God. Why are we putting so many things before God? You cannot get close to God and want to be comfortable. Right. The more you get, the closer you get to God, the more hell come your way. Period. Expect it. Expect it. You're going to have more trials and tribulations than the new come up because you're closer to God. You're going to have more responsibility then the newcomer, because you're closer to God. You're going to have to take care of more of the ministry than other people because you're closer to God than other people. He, he will not put more on you than you can, than you can bear. Yeah. So if it seems like it's a lot, thank God for it. Don't say, oh, I quit. It's too much. You can't quit because you want to get closer to him. And the more you get close to him, the harder it gets to perform mm -hmm. for him. Because the opposition is more when you get closer to him than it was when you wasn't that close to him. So if you got all hell breaking out, thank you, Jesus, I'm doing something right. He reminded me this. This is for me. I felt mad last week and a week before that. I thank God I don't have a shotgun. Probably would have been stupid. People get you, but he reminded me. He said, you got to love your enemy. You're not being used as a bad thing. You're being used as a good thing because he's going to provide for me. So no matter what the devil do to me, I should not let that get me out of character. But I'm human, but he said you cannot be human in ministry. You got to stay spiritual if you want to serve me. The closer you get to me, the more they're going to leech off you. The more they're going to pull on you. And the closer you get to me, the more they're going to abuse you. 
and ridicule you and backbite you and spit on you and hate you. The closer you get to me, the more you're going to have go discord and discomfort and sleepless nights. And you cannot, this is for me, complain. Because you wanted that closer walk. You wanted the gifts. You wanted the wisdom. You wanted the, the spirit of God. You wanted the goodness of Jesus. You wanted it. Now you got it. Handle it. Because you can't give it back. That's right. That's right. See? They don't teach you all the hell that goes with pastoring. It looks good. But it's not. Affliction is no joke. Persecution is always. And y'all can't hear it because I won't let you hear what people are saying. And the things that are being done. Why? Because I got to shield the sheep. I got to take the beats. I can't tell you about the stuff going on. I'm a protector of the, of the church. I can't just tell you everything. I don't want y'all feeling mad at other people. Like I did with the people. I don't want the old jerk upset. <laughs> Let me get out of it. God got this real all right. But I, I you know, he asked and the devil he speak to you. He said, You ain't a man, you let them do that to you. How you a man? You must be a bishop and you let them walk over you. I said, Yeah. I almost fell for that. Like Apostle McIntyre was preaching today. That 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 mirage and that 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 that, 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 that dream you see, and you almost entertain that thought. And if I would entertain that thought, I'd be in jail. So I don't want to go back there thinking about what I would have did if I wasn't saved. I don't want to think that way. I don't want to, I want to thank you, Jesus, that I was used. Because I'm still alive today as a living witness that our cup runneth over. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. God ain't you use us or not. We still going to be victorious. Why? Because you used us. That made me victorious right there. Because you seen it upon yourself to use me. Blessed are those that are persecuted for my name's sake. They take advantage of us for Jesus' sake. But that's all right. He has the last say. So don't put too many things before God. Don't be comfortable when you serve God. The more hell comes your way, the more he requires from you. A little bit and you still shortchange him because the closer you get to God, the more you must do for him. The more you must give him. The more you must do for him and the more you must give him. He requires a lot from you. If you want a lot from him to get close to God, you must have sleepless nights. Where you are with God and God alone. No matter, no one matters when, when God is in your life. When you're close to God, no one else matters. No one else matters. We sing that song, and again, it's a song. Nothing else matters but me and you, Jesus, who sit at the mantle. And then when it get all boils down to it, everything else matters but God. <laughs> you can do the praise that you can do the flopping dancing and then when push comes to shove oh I gotta do this first I gotta go here first I gotta do that first and then no I know nothing else matters that's what Jesus is saying Satan is right there saying look Lord she, they said nothing else matters they even prayed that and now look today everything matters but you and Jesus gotta just be like you're right but I died for him still We got to be careful what we say because we have to come with what we say. And if we say nothing else matters and then something else matters, we get up. We lose our crowns, our stars, our pendants, our rubies, our sapphires, our streets of gold. You lose stuff. Don't lose stuff. I'm giving you the scriptures now. I'm giving you the scriptures now. What one question? When did you 